Hey everyone, back tonight with um, Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 20. It's been about a month since I've um, made you know, my videos. But I've just been real busy with things. Um, I've been on vacation. And I you know, haven't been around um, YouTube lately. So I'm just now um, getting back into my videos where I stopped up at Ezekiel 20. So, um,. Yeah, let's let's begin. So Ezekiel chapter twenty says this Israel is continuing rebellion in chapter one. It says in the seventh year in the fifth month, on the tenth day of the month, certain of the certain of the elders of Israel came to inquire of the Lord, and sat before me, which is of course at Ezekiel. And the word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, speak to the elders of Israel, and say to them, Thus says the Lord God it is to inquire of me that you come. As I live, declares the Lord God, I will, not, I will not be inquired of by you. Will you judge them, son of man? Will you judge them? Let them know the abominations of their fathers, and say to them, Thus said the Lord God, On the day when I chose Israel, I swore to the offspring of the house of Jacob, making myself known to them in the land of Egypt. I swore to them, saying, I am the Lord your God. On that day I swore to them that I would bring them out of the land of Egypt into a land that I searched that I had searched out for them, a land flowing with milk and honey, the most glorious of all lands. And I said to them, Cast away the, the detestable things your eyes feast on, every one of you, and do not defile yourselves with the isles of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. But they rebelled against me and were not willing to listen to me. None of them cast away the detestable things their eyes feasted on, nor did they forsake the idols of Egypt. Then I, then I said, I, I would pour out my wrath upon them and spend my anger against them in the midst of the land of Egypt. But I added for the sake of my name, that it should not be profaned in the sight of the nations among whom, I, whom they live, in whose sight I made myself known to them in bringing them out of the land of Egypt. So I led them out of the land of Egypt and brought them to the wilderness. I gave them my, my statues and, and made known to them my rules. By which, if a person does them, he shall live. Moreover, I gave them I gave them my Sabbath as a sign between me and them, that they might know that I am the Lord who signifies them. But the house of Israel rebelled against me in the wilderness. They did not walk in my statutes, but rejected my rules. By which, if a person does them, he shall live. And my Sabbath they greatly profaned. Then I then I said I would pour out my wrath upon them in the wilderness to make a full end, end of them. But I added for the sake of my name, that it should not be profaned in the sight of the nations, in whose sight I had brought them out. Moreover, I swore to them in the wilderness that I would not bring them to the land that I had given them, a land flowing, flowing with milk and honey, the most glorious of all lands, because they rejected my rules, and did not walk in my statutes, and profane my Sabbaths, for their heart went after their idols. Nevertheless, my eyes spared them, and I did not destroy them or make a full end of them in the wilderness. Now, God saying that even though Israel continued to rebel against Him, and even though they continued doing things they have been doing, you know, God still loved them. He still forgave them for the things. Um, you know, He didn't destroy them, but I mean, He did this. He did discipline them. He did allow bad things to happen to them, so they could wake up and come come back to Him. Um, let's see here. Yes, says, Nevertheless, my eyes spared them, I did not destroy them, or make a full end of them in the wilderness. And I said to their children in the wilderness, Do not walk in my, or do not walk in the statues of your fathers, nor keep their rules, nor defile yourselves with their idols. I am the Lord, your God, walk in my statues, and be careful to, to obey my rules, and keep my Sabbaths holy, that they may be a sign between me and you, that you may know that I am the Lord, your God. But the children rebelled against me. They did not walk in my statues. They were not careful to obey my rules, on which if a person does them, he shall live. They profane my Sabbaths. Then I said, I will pour out my wrath upon them, and spend my anger against them in the wilderness. But I withheld my hand, and added for the sake of my name, that it should not be profaned in the sight of the nations, in whose sight I have brought them out. Moreover, I swore to them in the wilderness, that I would scatter them among the nations, and disperse them through the countries. Because they had not obeyed my rules, but had rejected my statutes, profaned my Sabbaths, and their eyes were set on their father's idols. Moreover, I gave them statues that were not good, and rules of which they could not have life. And I defiled them, though, or it says, and I defiled them through their very gifts, and their, and their offering of all their firstborn, 
that I might devastate them. I did it that they might know that I am the Lord. So for them to wake up, God had to, you know, kill their kill their children. He had to take their children away. He had to allow their children to die so they could wake up and come back to God. They could wake up and realize you know, the sins that they were doing. So God had to basically put their children to death for them to wake up and realize and realize what they were doing so they could connect and get right with God. You know, I'm saying, you know, God does not take sin. God does not take sin, you know, um, lightly. He doesn't take it lightly at all. He takes it very, he takes it very seriously. And um, you know, sometimes God has to do. The, sometimes God has to do. You know, sometimes the worst things you never think He would do to get to wake us up to get our attention. You know, He, he may. You know, He may allow us to have to go do something really bad for us to wake up. You know. He may have put us into a real bad car wreck so that we could wake up and, and get, you know, get back, you know, with him, repent of our sins, and get right with him. And he may have put us in the hospital. He may, he may have to let something bad happen to us so we can repent and come back to him. So you know, take sin very seriously. Don't just don't continue in sin and don't repent. You know, you've got, you've got to repent. You know, you can't call yourself a Christian if you're going to continue in sin and not repent. Repent, repentance is key. Especially in relationship with God, it's very key. And um, you know, we're all sinners. You know, we we've all made mistakes. I mean, I know I do. We all we all make mistakes in life. You know, we all say things we shouldn't say. We all do things we shouldn't say. You know, it's perfect, of course. You know, but that's when we all need a savior. We all need Christ to help us those bad times, to help us repent, us, to help us live our life, you know, right for Him. Because without Christ, there is no hope. There is no salvation. There's nothing. There's nothing to live for. You know, um, there is no forgiveness. But with Christ, you know, He will forgive you. He does love you. He will forgive you your sins. He will, you know, help you, and He will save you. First of all, He will help you get over your sins. He will help you repent. He will help you live a, a life righteously for Him. You know, but you know, if, if you continue in your sin and you don't repent, and majority of the time you're not saved, um, and if you are saved, God. God will only give you so many warnings until He has to wake you up. Until, until He has to something bad to happen to you for you to wake up. It's not fun, trust me, I've been there. So, you know, repent of your sins, do what's right. Um, you know, read God's Word. You know, get to know God in a relationship. You know, and um, you know, just get to know Him. You know, be in, be in, get in a relationship with Him. You know, talk to God, pray to God, you know, read His Word. And that's all. It's only you can get closer to God. Just reading His Word, studying it from Genesis to Revelation, reading the whole thing. You know, um, asking Him to, to you know, to open your heart, to um, you know, to lead you down the right path, to lead you away from your sin, and lead you down the path that you need to go on, which is you know, righteousness, which is the path of God. That's that's the way you need to be. That, you know, that's the way. You, that's the road that, that you need to be on. You need to repent of your sins and get right with God. And um, you know, and, you know, stop continuing in your sin and repent and, and live your life right with God because if you don't, he's going to allow something bad to happen to you before you wake up. Trust me, it's happened to me. It's not fun. So, you know, listen to God's warnings very carefully. You know, you've got, you've got to repent. You've got to get right with God. you got to do what's right. If you don't, then he's going to allow something bad to happen to you before you wake up. So, but um, moving on, it says um, let's see, twenty-seven. Therefore, son of man, speak to the house of Israel and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, who is Christ, and this also your fathers blaspheme me by dealing treacherously with me. For when I have brought them into the land that I swore to give them, then then there and wherever. They saw any high hill or any leafy tree. There they offered their sacrifices, and there they presented the provocation of their, off of their offering. There they sent up their pleasing aromas, and there they poured out their drink offerings. I said to them, What is, what is the high place to which you go? So its name is called Bama to this day. Therefore say to the house of Israel, Thus is the Lord God. Will you defile yourselves after the, after the manner of your fathers and go, and go whoring after their detestable things? When you present your gifts and offer up your children in fire, you defile yourselves with all your idols to this day. 
and I shall and I shall be inquired of by you, O house of Israel. As I love declare the Lord of God, I will not I will not be inquired of by you. God's saying is, you know, Israel, if you continue in your sin, not repent, I want nothing to do with you until you get right, you know, with God. He sent he sent he's telling Israel that he doesn't he wants nothing to do with them until they get right with him, until they repent and, and, and start living their life right, righteously for God. Uh, verse 32 what is, what is in your mind shall never happen thought let us be like the nations of the tribes of the countries and worship wood and stone and God's saying you know, that's never going to happen because Jesus Christ who, you know, he's, he's the true God there's no other God but him and, you know, and these people that worship these false gods who, who are in these false religions who are in, who are in these cults you know, they're going to go to hell because they're not worshiping Christ they're not saved you know they're they're worshiping idols. They're not they're not living right. They're continuing their sin. And they're not living right. And when they die, they will go to hell. They were never saved. And they followed false gods who are, who are really demons. And um, it was, they were they were deceived. And if, if they were if they would repent of their sins, if, they, if God was saved them, they would repent of their sins and get right with the Lord. And live their lives right for him, they, they'd be saved. But these people who continue in these false religions, in these cults, they're not saved. And they're going to go to hell unless they repent and come to Christ for salvation. The Lord, the Lord will restore Israel. As I, as I live, the close Lord God, surely with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, and with wrath poured out, I will be king over you. I will bring you out from the people and gather you out of the countries where you are scattered. With a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, and with a wrath poured out, I will bring you into the wilderness of the people, and there I will enter into judgment with you face to face. So God's had it with Israel. He's He's saying, I'm I'm going to you know confront you face to face over your over your sins. He's had it with them. As I entered into judgment with your fathers in the wilderness in the land of Egypt, so I enter so I will enter into judgment with you, declares the Lord God. I will make you pass under the rod. And I will bring you to the bond of the covenant. I will purge you out of the rebels from among you, and those who transgress against me, I will bring them out of the land where they where they sojourn, but they shall not enter the land of Israel. And then you will know that I am the Lord. God saying He's going to purge out these evil, evil, wicked people out of Israel. He's going to purge them out. They, he's pretty much going to kill them, pretty much. He's going to lock them out, so Israel can be saved. As for you, O house of Israel, thus says the Lord God: Go serve every one of you his idols now and hereafter if you will not listen to me but my holy name you shall no more pro you shall no more profane with your gifts and your idols for on a holy mountain the mountain high of Israel because the Lord God there are all there all the house of Israel all of them shall serve me in the land there I will accept them and there I will require your contributions and the choices of your gifts with all your sacred offerings as a pleasing aroma I will accept you when I bring you out from the people and gather you out of the countries where you have been scattered, and I will manifest my holiness among you in the sight of the nations, and you, will, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I bring you the land of Israel, the country that I swore to give, you, to give to your fathers. And there you shall remember your ways and all your deeds with which you have defiled yourselves. And you, shall, and you shall hate yourselves for all the evil that you have, that you have committed. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I deal with you for my name's sake, not according to your evil ways, or according to your corrupt deeds, O house of Israel, the presence of the Lord God. And the word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, set your face towards the south land, preach against the south, and prophesy against the forest, against the forest land, in the Negev, which is of course southern Israel today. Say to the forest of the Negev, Hear the word of the Lord, thus says the Lord God, Jesus Christ, Behold, I will kindle a fire in you, and shall devour every green tree in you, and every dry tree, the blazing flame shall, no, shall not be quenched, and all faces from south and north shall be scorched. By it, all flesh shall see that I, the Lord, have kindled it; it shall not be quenched. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, they are saying of me, Is he not a maker of parables? So that's chapter twenty about about uh, Israel's continuing rebellion against God, and God's had it with them you know, because they continue in their sin and not repenting. God allow these bad things to happen to Israel so they can repent and come back to him and of course the Lord ends up restoring Israel because of their repentance and I'm getting their right getting their you know their lives right with God again 
Since chapter uh, 20, I'm about to chapter 21. Here shortly.